as we rolled in here to uh, set up our little perimeter in the market, uh, a couple uh, IEDs went off, which caused uh, civilian as well as military casualties in the market. And from there, our uh, economic evaluation was put on a stand hold. I play an Iraqi policeman and I keep uh, crowd control and uh, help out the, uh, the soldiers. Part of the operation is going to the Iraqi police and saying, you have a problem. How can we help you solve this problem? We join forces with them. Uh, we try to let them handle as much as the rest of the population as, as we can. I'd say it's pretty realistic. I mean, from a personal experience, I've been over there already twice before. And so, and from what I've seen here, it's just like the same that I see over there. Get back! Get back! Go get him! Go! Get back! They got to get in the mind state that it is real, uh, because if they think that it's just training, then that's all it's going to be. Uh, I have a gunshot wound to the hand, and usually they'll come and uh, check me and help me out. They'll try to get on my arm. We want to create a very uh, difficult, complex situation where we keep throwing uh, stimulus at them that they're not expecting to. That's what that's what combat is. We don't know what the enemy will do. Tricks in the air and fruits of the earth. It's all part of the 2009 Vidalia Onion Festival. It's really put Vidalia on the map uh, over the years, and uh, it seems to get more famous every year. Stacked from the ceiling all the way down to the floor, there's no doubt about it, folks in Vidalia have a love affair with the onion. I love growing Vidalia onions. He's got to, with about 100 people working his factory, they box out about 400,000 each day. And while you munch down on these sweet veggies, you can get a show in the sky. The audience, they're just exceptional. Uh, they're, we're a veterans organization and they're very pro-military and the veteran and very supportive. Not only will they show off military maneuvers, but daredevils will test the laws of gravity, all in the name of the sweet Vidalia onion. In Vidalia, Stephanie Simone, WJCL, Fox 28, thecoastalsource.com. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. A simple song carries in the wind, playing for those who gave their lives. A riderless horse moves on, symbolizing a warrior who will ride no more. I think that today causes everybody to stop, reflect, and remember what this business is really all about. Outside police headquarters, family, friends, leaders, and police officers gather. It is a day for loved ones to pay tribute to officers killed in duty. Mark A. McPhail, Sr. Roses are laid next to the police memorial statue that stands tall along Oglethorpe Avenue. 48 roses for 48 fallen heroes. Clara McCord is one of many family members who made the trip. She peacefully lays a rose for her father, killed in 1921. It was Easter Sunday morning when my father was killed and I was six months old. Clara, now 89, still feels the loss. He robbed me of a wonderful childhood. She, like others, somehow find comfort this day. Eight, five. A memorial saluting police officers whose duty was so bravely served. In Savannah, Kelly Foster, WJCL Fox 28, thecoastalsource.com. I like throwing in the air and I spin it a lot. I tried to do a cartwheel, but that didn't work. I spin it like really fast. Try to dance, try to flip the sign. I think that it works for um, the employees and the employers. I think it's um, not very expensive for the advertising. I think my duty is just to get people to come into my, uh, my company. Well, they pay me just to get people attention and get them to come inside. The way we dress. You know, it's the costume we're wearing. 
that people like that. Well, I think this advertisement definitely helps companies because it gets like closer to the people because I'm out here in the street, so they see me every day. There's people that come in like every day. I think it helps um, because you have the opportunity to sort of engage the people that are driving by and you can um, react and respond to them and they, they you. I get all kind of reactions. And I, I just seen a lot. I... People honk, people smile, people blow your kisses. Yeah, a lot of honking, yelling, and crazy looks like wow. And... People holler, people woohoo baby at you, they wave, different things. And kids smiling, and I get a lot of everything. Older folks, they really enjoy it. It really never gets boring. I can always think of something new. I just love my job. Everyone pushes themselves to the limit during recruit training, battling anxiety and fatigue. And in the winter months, on top of all that, they have to battle the cold. The sun is shining, yet these recruits can't feel its heat. They're crawling, climbing, and kicking their way through the toughest parts of training, all during a cold spell. We have to man, demand, demand, demand everything from them. Uh, we teach them everything from, I guess, how to brush their teeth, all the way to how to march, walk, how to talk, uh, how to scream. And uh, it's, it's demanding on the drill instructors, especially the green belts, because they're actually the ones that are out there, you know, teaching them and training them uh, 24 hours, seven days a week. Stay down! Stay down! Stay down! The relationship between a DI and his recruits is unlike any other. It looks intense because it is. With the yelling comes mutual respect. Whether or not if they stay in four years, if they get out, they're going to learn some sort of tangibles that's going to carry with them for the rest of their lives. It's been said that a Marine never forgets his DI. Many other drone soldiers might say that if they ever encounter their drone soldiers and hear their voice, they will snap too. It's just one of those things that's already kind of like programmed into our head. They taught me uh, responsibility. They taught me uh, discipline. Uh, to never never give up, never quit, and do what you have to do. Uh, like, just like I tell my recruits and what I've learned from them is you can make it through this, you can pretty much do anything. On this day, recruits take orders from their DIs as they put the skills they've learned to the test on the crucible. After hiking six miles, they arrive at an obstacle course. I say something, you say something. It's just day one of three. They lack of sleep and lack of uh, food as well. They learn to adapt to the unexpected and test their combat skills, agility, and strength. Meanwhile, other recruits are only halfway through the training. The relationship with their drill instructors is still fragile. While firing on the range, they keep their distance. We kind of take them away as far as some of the stress. We only allow the senior drill instructor to come up here and actually kind of talk to them. Uh, what some guys maybe call coddle them a little bit, but uh, for the most part, our coach is trying to you know, keep the stress down, not yell at them, just kind of encourage them about marksmanship. In a few weeks, these young men will be here, nearing the end of training. You give them that approval, that stamp of approval to go out to the fleet and do what they're supposed to do. After 13 weeks of training, the recruits join their DIs as Marines. Many will leave Paris Island. Some will begin their careers here, while others find themselves yearning to come back as a DI. Lo and behold, here comes 12 years down the road, and I decided to come back. and I. My main goal was to get back to the Marine Corps, what the Marine Corps has done for me. A life clearly not meant for everyone, only those who have what it takes. Ashley Jacobs, WJCL Fox 28, thecoastalsource.com. When you first drive up to Popple Farms, you can hear the music, race ducks, ride on a cow train, and even take a hayride. We went to the, um to the, um, patch. Yet what really attracts thousands of people each Halloween is the giant corn maze. And it's all about coming out and spending time with your family. Last year we took a tour of the maze from the sky. This year we decide to take it from the ground and try our luck. Janelle and Tanya Popple creators lead us in. However, for the rest, we're on our own. So we're on our mission trying to find our way out. It takes about 30 to 45 minutes on average. And on a scale of 1 to 10 in terms of difficulty, Tanya says it's about an 8. We have lots and lots of areas that there are 6 to 8 foot corn stalks and you can stay lost out there for quite a long time. That could happen, especially with a few confusing parts. We were lucky though because starting mid-October, the maze gets even scarier. It will be the field of screams and we'll be turning the cornfield crazies loose. There's no lights out there. It's a 10 acre cornfield, so it's pretty intimidating. We decide the only intimidating thing today is the hot 
weather and making it the whole way, well, not saying we cheated, we just found a shortcut out. In Odom, Kelly Foster, WJCL, Fox 28, thecoastalsource.com. As the casket of Sergeant Jonathan Penny makes his way down the steps of Cathedral St. John the Baptist, nearby hundreds salute a man they've never even met, yet show the deepest gratitude for his bravery overseas. It's the least we can do to show our respect to fallen soldiers. James Bayou's is one of many spectators proudly standing in honor of Penny with American flag in hand. They give so much for us, for our freedom, for uh, our way of life. A 21 gun salute rings out on Lafayette Square for the fallen ranger. His body is then placed into a horse-drawn carriage. I miss you, brother. I love you. Robert Way and Penny went through medic training together. He and fellow rangers describe Penny as someone who'd do anything for anybody. Most people have someone they know they can always call on. Someone day and night will always be there. And for all of us who knew John, that was that guy. During the emotional farewell, Penny makes one final stop to Kevin Barry's on River Street, a place known as a popular ranger hangout. The owner is very respectful of the rangers, goes out of his way as much as he possibly can to help us out and do everything he can. Army Ranger Scott Gilberson also knew Penny personally. He uh, always cared about everyone. Loved his wife. Along with his wife, Kristen, the fallen ranger leaves behind his mother, Sue Penny. Prayers and our thoughts are with the family and with all the military. And Bayou's along with all those who showed up to send this brave soldier the ultimate farewell. He wants those fighting to defend our country to always remember. We support them. We want them to know that. In Savannah, Nikki Gaskins, WJCL, Fox 28, thecoastalsource.com. We are moving the chapel. Go into the chapel and we're gonna get married. I think it's a neat idea. It's uh, something that, uh, you know, it could have been taken down and disappeared, but we decided to keep it. We had done a couple of dry runs and we knew we had some spots that we didn't have, but maybe two inches to get a 30 foot building through. So it was quite, a, quite an undertaking. You had to have the police department, fire department, um, all your utilities, Georgia Power, telephone. Between street signs, uh, mailboxes, and those type things, we've had to move probably about 60 just to get out. Well, the lot's kind of ugly and, and barren. I'm wondering what they're going to put up. Well, that plot of land my husband is going to clean up. We have to put it back in a certain order as it was found when, when the crew came in and built the chapel. A 13-year-old has not come down yet, so he's the one who's going to be really sad that the Miley Cyrus church has been moved. It's yeah. like a landmark to them. I mean, they made the movie there. We got our picture taken with her, and it was awesome. I think the movie is going to be a part, but I think that the church itself is going to be so charming that it's going to be a draw. And we'll rebuild it. It'll be completely rewired and replumbed re-roofed and brought the code and what I call the whole nine yards. Anytime we can save a structure from well, ending up in a landfill or being torn down, it's a good thing. I will be real excited when it's parked. <laughs> Come get married on Tybee. <laughs>